Jack Time Gaming. Uh, I'm Jack, and you might be wondering what is Jack Time Gaming? Well, sometimes someone will come up to me and they'll say, Hey, do you know what time it is? Well, you don't need a watch, and you don't need a clock. That's right, it's Jack Time, baby. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, this is Jack Time Gaming. Uh, welcome. So, I'll tell you what's worthy of my Jack Time, and hopefully, what's worthy of your time as well. Um, as far as the, uh, the new generation of gaming coming out. So, I'm real excited about the Xbox One. If you're a PlayStation fan, that's cool too. Uh, all sorts of great games come into both systems, uh, so stick around and check it out. A um, little bit about me, my first gaming console was uh, the Pong. I was just a little kid when we had Pong. Uh, it tells you a little bit how old I am, but uh, that was uh, really cool when it first came out. You know, you look at it now and how, how basic of a game it really was. It, it's kind of laughable when you look at the games today, but. Uh, it was really something brand new that no one had seen before uh, uh, when it when it was out. So I remember having that, and after that, the Atari 2600 came out, and I had that and a lot of games on that one. Uh, Combat was a game that came packaged with the console. Um, I remember playing games like uh, like a Circus Atari. There was a game called uh, Night Rider, and uh, and uh, the game that was in the media recently that was a really terrible game was E.T. and I had that one that was I remember playing that you go around and collect little little candies and stuff and after that uh, I got a Commodore 64 that was really cool I learned to program it uh, that kind of home computers were kind of a new thing back then uh, but I had a lot of fun with the games on that um, uh, so after that the next console I got was a place the first PlayStation so that was a great system. I, I played Tomb Raider on it, uh, the first Driver, um, Gran Turismo 2, a lot of great games on that. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, then the PlayStation 2 came out, but Microsoft had announced the new Xbox console, and I was really excited about the new console. Uh, at the time, a lot of people didn't know if Microsoft could pull it off because they were not a gaming company, and how could they compete with the hugely popular PlayStation and also Nintendo was popular. I never had a Nintendo, but Microsoft was jumping in from operating system platforms into into the gaming community. Anyway, that was it was really successful. So I, I went with Xbox, and um, believe it or not, that's what I still have today. Check it out. All right, here it is. I apologize; it's kind of dark in this corner where I keep it. That's the original Xbox with the original, they call it the Duke controller. This is the big controller that everyone complained was too big. And they came out after this was launched, they came out with a smaller controller called the Controller S. Especially in Japan, people they have small hands. So for me, I have big hands, so I I'm, was perfectly fine with this controller. Uh, worked great for me, but uh, for most people that have s smaller hands, uh, this, this is just way too big. But uh, you know, I've been using this controller for 12 years, and it's worked great. Of course, they don't come wireless back then uh, quite yet, until the 360 came out. But there's the uh, console. I remember how excited I was when this came out. Original Xbox. I'm sure everyone's seen this before. But that was 12 years ago, and in, in the world of uh, gaming consoles, that is a very long time. So it's time to get a new one. 
So I never got a 360. Uh, when it came out, it was only four years after the first Xbox came out. And I had a whole stack of games I hadn't even opened yet that were piling up. Also, I had a whole list of games I still wanted to play that I hadn't bought yet. Uh, so I decided to skip out the 360 generation. I figured it might be four more years until the third console would come out. Uh, unfortunately, it was eight more years, so it's been 12 years since uh, 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 since I've gotten a new console, so the first Xbox. Um, so I'm ready to upgrade. Uh, my technology is getting getting, you know, old. My TV uh, needs an HDMI, and and uh, there's a lot of features that like the, even the 360 has that I, I don't have yet, like. Uh, like the Xbox Live Marketplace, downloadable games, things like that. I, I did use Xbox Live a little bit on the original Xbox, but not a whole lot. Uh, the Xbox Live service didn't come around until about a year after the original Xbox came out, so that was about 2002. Um, so anyway, I'm ready to upgrade. I'm excited. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. And uh, let's get started. Uh, uh, this year I got... I got an invitation to attend the Microsoft uh, press conference, which is on the screen behind me. That was really exciting. I was so excited to go to that with the, with the year in the, during a year of a console launch, and I got to go to the to the E3 that I always wanted to go to. And anyway, I got a couple of things from there. This is my admission badge. Check that out. So this was to the media briefing. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that. There we go. So that's really cool, I'm like saving that. And then I got to, uh, if you check out the website, jacktimegaming.com, bam! Um, you'll see a hands-on review. I got to play with the controller, which was really cool, really cool controller. It feels real nice. And the rumble features are awesome. You, I think any anyone that gets a new, the new Xbox, you're gonna love the controller, it's great. Um, so anyway, I got to do that. Uh, I got some, some other cool things while I was there, uh, t-shirt, uh, uh, from the game Sunset Overdrive and I also got uh, three months of Xbox Live so I'm saving that for when the Xbox comes out pretty cool I also renewed my subscription to the official Xbox magazine so this month's edition has Batman Arkham Origins on it so all you Batman fans will like that issue uh, I still have the very first original Xbox issue number one and the launch edition issue and uh, anyway I'm starting to clean out my huge collection of Xbox magazines because they're just taking up a lot of shelf space and I might hold on to a couple of issues like the issue number one uh, things like that and anyway I clean out my DVDs and my CDs I gotta transition more into a digital world so that's gonna be cool Anyway, let's start getting into some games. Uh, the first one we'll take a look at is Titanfall. If you're not familiar with that game, it's really cool. It's on the screen right behind me there. Titanfall looks awesome. You got to check it out. Um, basically, the story is uh, that you you have these giant mechs, uh, big robots that do battle, and and you're the pilot. So you get to run around and 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 you can call up these these mechs. Uh, that come in drop ships, so they drop the mech and you get into it and, and you kind of battle each other and it looks really cool. It also got uh, a game of show for E3. It was the best looking game there was at the show, so let's check that out. Uh, see what you think. I should have been here. They're going to call us marauders, terrorists, or worse. I'm sorry. I promised you I'd never get back in one of those damn machines again. If you're looking down, I hope you understand. We left everything behind. Hell, getting here was just the beginning. You said it would be tough to start over, but I didn't listen. You 
said more would follow. I thought they'd leave us alone. I was wrong. But there's no turning back. This is our land. This is our land. And I will fight for it. right behind us. Most of the ships are running on fumes right now. We're out of options. It's now or never. Either way, we need this fuel, or none of us are gonna make it. The fleet's counting on you. Go, go, go! McCord, we'll take your squad up this road. The rest of you, move through this building behind me and secure the area. This is a hardpoint operation. Take control of as many hardpoints as you can. Patch me into them, and I'll take care of the rest. Hey, your Titan will be ready in 60 seconds.
Hey, look at your map. You're close to Hardpoint Charlie. It's in that building. Defend the hard point. We got tight support, guys. Hell yeah, about damn time. All right, that was Titanfall. That looks incredible, man. I can't wait to get my hands on that one. It's going to be a lot of fun to play. Anyway, uh, the next game we're going to look at is called Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Uh, this one is a sequel. I'm not familiar. I haven't played with the first one, but it looks like more of a family-friendly game. Uh, so it's got all kinds of cool characters, kind of cool plants. you got to fight, fight off the zombies. It looks more kind of a comical take on, on zombies and plants and Anyway, it looks kind of fun, but check it out, see what you think. All right, that was Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. All right, uh, getting into the news. Uh, this week was kind of a slow week in the news department. Uh, we did have Comic-Con this weekend. Uh, not a whole lot of news. I was expecting a little bit more news to come out of Comic-Con, but we did get a little more detailed features about how the Xbox One will work and how the Kinect camera and the controller will work. Uh, so some examples are uh, something that I thought was really cool is if you uh, have your cell phone linked up to your account, uh, they can have a, a thing where if a character in the game picks up his phone and calls your character, your actual phone will ring. You'll actually get a phone call from the, from the video game. And I thought that was a really cool feature uh, that could make things more exciting, especially in like a survival horror type of game that could really add to the uh, to the uh, tension It'll be pretty exciting uh, another feature they have is like for example if you're playing killer instinct and and you have your friends come over a lot and play and let's say you have your controller mapped differently for example uh, your thumbstick it, you like it inverted and your friend doesn't or maybe you like the button set up differently Instead of having to pause the game and go into the settings and change the controller layout every time, the camera will recognize who's holding the controller and it will remember the controller setup for that player. 
So when the minute you hand off your controller, it will automatically change the controller settings. You, so you don't have to pause the game and change the settings manually. So that was pretty cool too. Another feature they said they can do is it, uh, the Kinect camera can actually scan your face and put your face into a character model on the screen, complete with facial expressions and everything. So that, that looks really cool. I'm really interested to see how the, they're going to uh, make use of that. So anyway, that was uh, the major news that came out of Comic-Con. Um, the next, the next uh, convention is uh, Gamescom. It's in Germany this year, and they're uh, they're gonna. I'm expecting a lot more news about Xbox One, and but uh, it's really good that they're getting a lot of good features, getting people to get their hands on it, and uh, really cool features get people more excited about Xbox One. That's always good. So anyway, uh, the last game we're going to look at for this episode is uh, was actually demonstrated for the PlayStation 4, so it's a multi-platform game, and it looks really cool. The graphics look amazing, the technology looks amazing, even just the smallest little uh, details are just phenomenal that you, you, you don't see too much in video games. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Check it out. It's Tom Clancy's The Division. In 2001, a real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling the system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. From this point, the breakdown will happen fast. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed. Transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, People will do anything for survival. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies, sleeper cells, covert agents, but nothing can be confirmed. Our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains?
just a little bit The world's so quiet and still Santa's out there flying around And it's true That if you be
Listen, the armory is out back. Take whatever you need. The code is SH 1023. The code? Code for the armory. Doors and everything. It's good to be out of there. Okay, I think that's everybody in this room. Okay, I'm going for the armory. Should be back here. That hallway's clear. All right, that's Tom Clancy's The Division. That game looks great. I can't wait to hear a lot more about that game, get my hands on that. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Jack Time Gaming. Uh, let me know what you think, please, in the comments. Also, stay tuned for, uh, for a lot more news coming up, more trailers, more pictures. Uh, my website is jacktimegaming.com. Uh, you can check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Jack Time Gaming, and also right here on YouTube, Jack Time Games. So stay tuned. See you next time.